Welcome, 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 welcome. Hi, my name is Marilyn Shannon, and this is the Breaking Free Show. And we are in December, and it is hard to believe it, but it's almost the holiday time. So I want to wish everybody a happy and healthy holiday. And I, I wish for you everything that is humanly possible and more. So we have a wonderful show today, but before we get started, I want to say hello to Amnon. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. And you? I'm fine. Yes. How was your week? Your hair still you looks li- good. Do you like it? Yes. I come in almost every other week with a different hairdo. <laughs> I've gotten into doing my hair. Well, that's fine. Different color, different style, different earrings, you know. So you like it? I like it. Thank you. So Amnon is the man. He's the producer. He keeps things going. He helps me, uh, you know, do whatever it is that I do. I don't know. I just talk. He does everything else. Um, so anyway, you know, we always love to, um, the idea of the show is to open up concepts, ideas, possibilities, strategies, tools to build our personal freedoms and to empower each and every one of us to live the most fulfilling human experience that we can possibly live. And we love to share ideas, people doing things, people not doing things, wish they would do things, all of it in keeping with keep helping each other grow and connect and know that we're not alone, you're not alone, we're in it together. And that's what the show is all about. And we love to do things with kids, with teenagers, men, women, couples, families. The sky is the limit. Somebody asked me today um, if we have any limitations. No, we don't. We're not a traditional media. We're new media. And here we can do anything we want. And that's what we pride ourselves on. So if you're listening to the show and you're not part of the chat room, go right ahead and sign in. You'll see a little line on the little box. Put your name in there so you can be part of some of the conversation that goes on in the chat because a lot of it is really juicy. And you are always welcome to call in to our phone number, 919-518-9773 at any point point in time during the show if you have something to ask some comment to make an idea to you know share please do so and you can also contact us through skype computers that's plural 2k voice if you call if you want to connect with us from anywhere in the world this is an international show and we would love to hear from you so today we have three really terrific ladies on you're gonna it's gonna be a hoot you're going to learn something, you're going to hear something that's going to empower and inspire you, but at the same time, you're going to, you're going to learn something that's going to be um, impactful for how you go forward in your life. So we have Kathleen Sullivan, Doris Lorenz, and we have Susan Scarpelli, and they are three really great ladies. I thank you, Susan, for bringing your friends to us here so that we can have an open dialogue uh, about being a lesbian, and it's a topic that I am very interested in myself. I think that any time that we can bridge between each other and we have more understanding, that's when fear and all that kind of stuff goes away. One of the shows we did that was so impactful, uh, I guess it was last year when they came up with Amendment 1, was that we had people on here talking about, right before the vote, actually, Um, educating us. And it was this incredible show because here in North Carolina we were voting um, and it was really interesting. So I'm really happy to have you, all three of you here. Kathleen is uh, a marketing director, am I right, Um, for a company in Patchogue. And I can say that because I'm from New York, but she works remotely. She's in North Carolina. Susan is a financial planner and has been instrumental in her company, um, as far as human rights are concerned, so we want to talk about that. And Doris is in the uh, um, is you're in a protection, right? You're you're protected from the universe, right? Well, we can can we hear Doris? Hello, Doris. You're protected, yeah. right? You're a protected being. Oh yeah, I have right. to be. Yeah, so we're just we're glad that you're sharing yourself with us <laughs> and used to work with Verizon, right? Right. Perfect. So um, I guess. First of all, I get. I mean, you, I know that uh, Doris just said that you just got married, right? Yes, in July. In yep. Ju- and you've been with your partner how long? Uh, it'll be 17 years in March. Uh, oh. We've known each other 30 years. Wow. Um, and uh, we got married uh, in July uh, up in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, where it's legally possible Legal. to do so. Okay. 
Terrific. And then what about you, Kathleen? Cal, they call you, right? That's it. Yes. Right. So tell um, me about you. Uh, well, I've, uh, I have a partner and, um, her name is Kim. We've been together for, it'll be 23 years in January. And, um, we've known each other for about 30, close to 30 years. And, um, we have three children. Um, my son is 14, Ben, and, uh, twins, Jamie and Justin, they're 11. Wow. That's great. So did you, so I want to ask you about that too, but first let's go to Susan. So Susan, you're with a partner. Yes. Yes. I, I've known Lori since 1985. Um, we kind of got together in 1987, came out of the closet in 2002, and we were married in Provincetown, Massachusetts in 2007. Cool. So first of all, the first, stigma number one for me is that people generally would not, I mean, would not think that a gay couple would stay be together for a long time, be established, stable, and have a like a like a regular family. And so, stigma n- number one is they do, and we can, and they do, and we all can. So that's huge because a lot of times, a lot of people think that you you know, lesbians take a partner and then it's, then they're done with that and then they move on. But you three have established long lasting relationships, so that's wonderful. Yes. Yep. I mean, that's a big deal, isn't it? It is. It is. You know, I, I, uh, I myself come from a family whose parents were married for 40 years. And um, I, I always knew I was different in the sense that um, I knew I wasn't straight. But I always knew that kind of inherent to me was the desire to have a long-term monogamous relationship. Mm-hmm. It's still family. It doesn't matter if it's gay, lesbian, or straight. Right. Absolutely. So you, you always knew, Susan, that you, I don't even think we should say different because it shouldn't, I mean, I don't know, how would you, how would you say that? I mean, to say that you were different, that means that you're different. Well, you know, there's what a lot of people, you know, call the norm. Um, and uh, I guess <clears throat> when, you're, when you're growing up and you're not straight, and you hear the noise around you of what is normal and what's not normal, you almost begin to think that way. And it's not until you're an adult and you recognize who you are that you realize I'm no different than any other heterosexual couple. Lori and I are no different. Um, But a lot of people still view things of what's a normal relationship is a heterosexual relationship. And then they've probably gone so far as to recognize that a... um, a gay relationship is either just two men, two women, but they don't really think of it in the long-standing term relationship. Just like you say, there's the stigma. Um, but you know, Lori and I have just seems like we've been together forever. We've known each other longer, longer than half of our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really important. And, and, and Cal, you as well. And then you have children. Right. Right. Yep. Um, it's funny because when Kim and I got together, one of the things that we discussed was the fact that, I've always wanted children, and she was she was hesitant because she thought, um, you know, uh, that two gay women together, you know, having children wouldn't be tolerated. But in fact, I found the exact opposite to be true. I found that a lot of people view children as um, a great equalizer, and so, you know, neighbors and friends made here and classmate, the parents um, of my children's classmates, um, once they understand what our relationship is, um, it's, it's really not such a, such a big deal to them um, because we have, we, they recognize that we have children and, um, and I think that they see that committed relationship and it comes back to them that there's a value system in place that they may have thought differently about, but in fact, we're not that much different from their family dynamic and configuration. So, um, so I think it's a little bit of a wake up call. And I like to think that, uh, it's a, it's a bit of an eye opening experience, especially for people in, you know, in the South, Sure. Uh, you know, because right. it's not, not something, I don't know that you see it all the time. Um, you know, in New York, it was a little different, obviously New York, New York's a more liberal state where we came from. Um, but, but here in North Carolina, I have to say, I have not, I've not had any negative feedback that I know of. Um, no one has been unkind and my children have all been well received in in their classrooms and, 
um, within the Way County School District. So, I wonder, uh, Cal, uh, 50 years ago, uh, what the uh, acceptance level would have been? Yeah, yeah I, I don't. I don't think that that would have been very good. <laughs> yeah, and and two kids uh, that are the same age as your children, they haven't learned yet to hate. I don't think. Right. Well, well I mean, you know, I, I think that that's true. I, I think that, you know, it, it's. I have to comment on my own children's um, experience, and and that is that um, they have uh, initially. I think they had a hard time being comfortable with this. And still, I have. I have a. My, my son is in high school in his first year of high school, and I know he doesn't look to go in and re, you know wave a rainbow flag around the hallways, um, but. But if people ask him or if they discuss it with him, he's he's going to level with them and he's going to be honest. He doesn't he doesn't attempt to hide things or um, you know make it something that it's not. And and I think it speaks to the progress we have made, which I think we have to acknowledge that as a country we have made progress um, in, in a better direction. And I hope that we continue to move in that direction. Yeah, you know, I attended the Democratic National Convention that was. Uh, in North Carolina over in Charlotte and to hear the speakers include um, gay rights in, in all their speeches and I mean it was just matter of fact it was almost mainstream and I think that it is becoming more mainstream uh, uh, of an issue now and uh, hopefully someday it won't be an issue at all. Yeah I don't I, you know you said something um, Doris earlier, I think about um, kids not hating, but they do bully. So given, oh, you know, sure. given an opportunity of something, um, they will bully you. But maybe there's something about this that takes it out of the bully arena. I don't know what it is. I mean, I, it just hit me that there's something about this that maybe um, it, it it pulls at a different heartstring than something than than. A, a, a cause different uh, for a child to, to not bully a kid whose mother or father is gay. I don't know. Do you know? Do, I mean, do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Because I don't. Well, Cal, I'm, you could speak to that. I mean, yeah. I mean, I would just say that you know, my my son is is he's he's athletic. He's an athlete, and um, he's. Um, you know, he's not in one of your typically bullied groups. He's he's very um, he's very uh, social. He's very um, personable, and um, and I think that that goes toward you know not having an issue of being bullied in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, now, I don't think he would see it in the locker room and tell all his football teammates that he has two moms. Um, you know, he, he has close friends that are aware of it, and he's dating a girl, and she and her family are aware of it. Um, so I think in general, um, his personality um, sort of, you know, allows him to be amicable around classmates and they don't see him as a target for bullying uh -huh. um, in the first place. So I think that that's a lot of it. But, um, but I'm sure that there are kids who um, maybe are not perceived as, um, you know, as children that uh, are... Uh, acclimated in, in you know socially mm -hmm. and um and perhaps their their targets mm -hmm. so that would be my my short answer to well my long answer yeah to and yeah. i think and i think that they're um they're strong you know and they um maybe they speak maybe they're more sensitive maybe they speak differently they just i don't know i mean my i have my stepchildren um their mom is also um gay and my stepchildren um never have had an issue anything Never, 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 never. Have they ever, anything's ever popped up. So uh, it's, it's just a very interesting scenario, you know, when you think about it. But, um, you know, and having kids and being, and that, the, 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 the talk of being different, I think that when you talk about um, educating the world on, on I'm, I'm delighted to have this conversation because, you know, there are people who don't get to see, you know, a regular family doing regular things. Oh, by the way, you know, they have two moms. Or, by the way, 
they have two dads. I right. Mean, you know? Well, that, that's exactly true. I mean, that, that's, you know, until the examples are there, um, I, I don't think that most people are going to, um, I don't, I don't think most people are closed off to it. I, I, I don't, I don't think that that's, I, I think they they just are inexperienced and that their expectations are different. So like, for instance, in my neighborhood, People didn't really people didn't really know who we are um, when we moved in, and then when they when they further understood um, exactly what was going on, um, that there were two women uh, living here with a family, um, they knew us well enough, and they knew our kids well enough at that point where it didn't really bother them. Mm-hmm. So you know, right. I, I think that's um, that that's a lot of it. Sure, Susan, you look you like know, you have something. Okay, Doris, go ahead. I was just going to say that I'm uh, older than uh, probably both of them put together. (laughs) Um, I'll take that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And when I was young, say in my late teens, early 20s, things were quite different. Everybody was closeted then because we had to be. Right. Um, You know, it wasn't out in the open and it wasn't discussed and uh, it was just a different, uh, a real different time uh, that we lived in. Uh, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there were uh, gay bars that were, um, well, I get you wouldn't really go into them if you weren't gay. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that was the primary place to meet other gay people. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think that's the the case now. Um, You know, socially, uh, I, under duress, hang out with Cal. uh, (laughs) uh, No. um, Yeah, you only asked me over to handle your wiring on all your electronics. (laughs) Yes, exactly. She (laughs) mentors me on all the electronics. So was it, Doris? Doris, was it was it hard for you? Early on? Oh, extremely, extremely so, because I realized at a very, very young age that I was gay. I I, I didn't think of the term gay, but I knew that I liked women, and I knew that that was not acceptable. So I didn't tell anybody, and you don't speak about it. You live a double life uh, up until a certain age where, you know, then you really don't care anymore who knows it or who likes you or who dislikes you, you you get to a point where, you know what, it just doesn't matter anymore and you have to be who you are. Hmm. But that comes with, I don't know, uh, knowing, uh, having more self-confidence than you do when you're really young and not having that fear of rejection. Uh, And I think that the general public, the heterosexuals, um, generally they uh, will say, no, I, I I don't believe in being gay or I don't like gay people or whatever. But I have always found that once people get to know you as an individual, that's what makes the difference uh, because they see that you haven't got a third arm growing out of your back or you don't have eyes in the back right. of your head. Or, or like they, like uh, me, I'm Jewish, and they used to think, obviously, that we had horns, right? Oh, exactly. Sure, sure. Mm. But when they got to know you and realized that you didn't have horns, uh, you were okay. Right. Well, that's, and, why I'm, and, yeah, uh, that's why, you know, talking about this so people can get to – to know you, get to know, you know, um, in some and intimately, you know, in a way that you're, you're, I mean, you're sharing the things that you've been through, you know, Doris, for you, you're a trailblazer. I mean, you have, you have paved the way for a younger generation, multiple generations, you know, to feel comfortable with, you know, acknowledging who they are and being able to come out of the closet. Doris, people like Doris have done the hard time for people like Cal and myself who are next generation, you know, behind her. Right, right. Agreed. Well, you know, one thing you learn very early on is you don't put it in people's faces. Right. You know, that's not the first thing that comes out of your mouth when you meet somebody. 
right. uh, because it's, it's irrelevant. Exactly. And what? it's not the thing to come out of a heterosexual person's mouth either. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. When okay. you meet them, they don't say, oh, I'm straight or, you know. Um, but uh, if once they get to know you, that's the key. Exactly. You know, I, I just want to jump in and I just want to say that one thing that um, that I always find very difficult, uh, and, and this is this is true um, both in New York where we've lived and also here, is that whenever there is, um, you know, a, a gay celebration or a pride parade or whatever it might be, the media shows up and somehow they always manage to catch women riding motorcycles wearing leather or men dressed in tutus with feathers in their hair. Right. And I mean, to me, that's like the stereotype and that's the stereotype that we, we, you know, none of us benefit from right. and to just try and constantly every year feature those kind of pictures. It, it does nothing to, to, you know, create understanding between different groups of people. And I, I would really love to see like little children, you know, marching in the parade, holding balloons or face painting, the things that really happen. I would love to see that kind of thing. But somehow that's not the kind of thing that makes it to the paper or, right. or even even to, you know, news programs. And right. and that's really that's really a shame because I think more and more, um, I mean, the folks that we know are, you know, more mainstream kind of uh, committed relationships possibly with families, possibly not, but certainly sharing in that, that value system that honors uh, relationships, which right. I think what's, what it brings us all back to whether you're gay or straight or bisexual right. or transgender, it's all, that's what we're talking about, exactly. the majority of us. Yeah, no, I, I well, don't want to be yeah. associated with somebody who's a bigot. So if all that anybody ever saw was bigots, you know, I don't want to be considered a bigot. I just, right. I want to be considered somebody with a big heart who's got an open mind and an open heart and, you know, and an open mouth. But yeah. I agree with Cal. The, the media tends to focus on the stereotypical aspect of, of the gay community. And that's not who the majority of us are. Now, I love, you know, the guys that, you know, are comfortable with their tutus and their feathers, uh, I mean, they have a right too, but uh, right. that, absolutely. you're absolutely correct, though. It does not uh, in any way enhance, uh, you know, the, the gay community. But um, that's why uh, a couple of years ago they started Out Raleigh. Have you been to Out Raleigh? No. What is that? You have, Cal? I have. Yeah, I was this year. Yeah. Now, now that's a different, uh, a horse of a different color altogether. I mean, that was designed to not have the stereotypical type uh, uh, gay person. I mean, th th it was designed that uh, folks with families could bring their kids and not be embarrassed or, um, you know, and then they have, and it's very family oriented, but it's, a, it's the gay community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I do think that there's a place for, uh, for folks who are more overt about sexuality and they yeah. see the pride parade as the place to display that. I get that. But I agree with you that uh, Out Raleigh is more of a focus of, um, you know, less sexual behavior and more, um, you know, mainstream kind of uh, behavior. Mm. Yeah. 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 Um, I had a... So... How did you three meet? That was one of the questions that somebody's asked. Chris is asking on the chat. Do you know each other? How did you three meet? Well, Doris and I used to work for the same company in New York. Okay. And um, Cal and her partner, Kim, uh, Kim was uh, on the police force with one of my very, very dear friends in New York, whom I used to be her nanny for her kids when I was in college. Mm -hmm. And uh, she called me one day and she said, I have a friend and her partner who want to move down to North Carolina and they were looking at Fuqua Arena. Do you mind if they call you? And I said, absolutely not. And um, next thing you know, we're fast friends. That's wonderful. So, and is it a good community here in North Carolina? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean so. We, we've built our own infrastructure, too, um, with, you know, through certain social media groups. But um, I think it might be a little harder to find down here, a, a support, you know, 
right. um, social uh, aspect of it. But but we've all really put ourselves into a nice little community here and invited others to join. Well, you right. have to be you have to be very s- strong to be able to immediately stand out and and like we talked about, be different and and make the different not so different. And you have to be very strong women to be able to be doing what you're doing for as long as you've been doing it and, you know, getting married, going where you, ha- where you can go to, to, to accomplish that. I mean, and not to say, no, I'm going to follow the, uh, I'm going to do what I want, not what you want. I'm going to be who I want, not who you want me to be. It's a process. I think internally it's a process. And some of us get there a little faster than others. Um, but what's important is you get there. I don't think it really matters how much time it takes you. No. As long as you get there and you you are proud of who you are. Right. Um, you know, that's one thing in my industry. You never know what you're going to run into. Um, you know, especially, you know, I hate, to, I hate to reiterate this, but also in the South, it is just a little bit different. Mm. And um, you, you don't know what kind of house you're walking into and what kind of client. You hope that they're open-minded. And like Dara said, they get to know me first, and then and then they realize, you know, I have the same trials and tribulations in my marriage that they have, and um, you know, we have the same joys and we have the same challenges, and and um, you know, then it all seems to come together. I've never had anybody discriminate against me and say I don't want to be your client because you are gay. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's uh, I never would never hide who I am. I'm very proud of. Me, my relationship with Lori, um, we've known each other an awfully long time and loved each other. It almost seems longer. So, um, you know, I never, ever hide who I am. But it, it's hard. It is hard in the beginning. But as, you know, the bigger deal you make it, the bigger deal it seems to be to other people, I find. Right. And I think that's with anything. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and we, and I, you know, we have to stand up and we have to, you know, um, and like not make a thing about things but enough of a thing that it's, you know, because you have to. I mean, there are there are plenty of women who are not doing what you're doing, you know, who you know, want I, to. I, uh, Marilyn, I love the questions, you know, when the um, uh, people are trying to discriminate against gay folks. Uh, when they ask the question, you know, uh, when did you decide you were gay? Well, hmm. you know... Or, you know, how, how did you decide you were gay? I'd like to ask them, when did they decide they were straight? How, how did, how, when did they get straight? Yeah. And, and I, I'm yet to figure out how my marriage to Liz is a threat to a straight person's marriage. I just don't understand that I don't all. either. I, I really can't understand that nor how anybody can tell anybody who they should love or can't love. I mean, that from where anybody sits, how anybody can be in any ivory tower and be able to dictate, you know, and that something's going to happen with your kids or something's going to happen with their neighborhood. Or I, I just that's why I just I mean, it just blows me. And I'm and you know what? There's I do this. I do these things. I, I use talking sticks. Do you know what they are? And it's American. Nat- it's a Native American culture of being of having people come around in a circle, and listen to each other. Plain, simple listening. My dream is to take a stick with opposing sides on this issue so that other people can see and hear. Well, hearing is seeing, or seeing is hearing. I mean, listening. It's to to listen to each other, just to see the normalcy in people. And and, and just to to, for understanding purposes, that is my dream to get a stick in a group of people who are completely opposing on this issue and have them come away with something more than what they came in with. That's my dream. Well, I, I think that would be a, a very interesting experiment, Marilyn, and I think you ought to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be able to get people around a table who completely, um, relig- I don't care what, what they use, religion, whatever they use, to put them on that table and have them really listen to like women like you and to men. I mean, I, I've had, um, a client, I don't, she's grown up now, but I worked with her as a teenager and as a coach 
and her mother was here. Her father was in California. They had been married. He was gay. They got divorced. Um, he has a partner in California. The mother was here. They had such a fabulous relationship, and he was such a great daddy, and they did such great things because when she would go out as a high school student and she was going to be out past 11 or 12, it was her father that would check in with her because of the time difference. The mother would go to sleep. The father would check in. And he was so, like, just such a great daddy. And the partner is just a great daddy. And she grew up self-esteem, and she liked men. She did not not like men from this experience. She liked men. She was, you know, she was healthy. She might not have been great in school. That's where I came in to help her with some of those things. But, you know, overall, she was great. And, I, you know, I've often seen that. Sure, you're going to see men that may not be great daddies that are homosexual or women that may not be great moms. But you see that in anything. You see that in right. straight. Sure do. You know? So it's, it's, it's very interesting. And somebody uh, uh, on our chat wants to know what you think of Washington. You mean the former president? Yeah. You know, what, this is his question. What do you think of the language and stereotypes that come out of Washington? Do you understand that question? Well, some of them are educated folks and some of them are idiots. Plain simple. Yeah, I mean, I think the president has come a long way. And, um, you know, he, he, he's uh, a liberal thinker, uh, thank God. Mm-hmm. But there are some, you know, folks who've been in Congress for since Christ left Cleveland, and um, they 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 don't get it. They'll never get it. But this is something you can't stop. You know, you might uh, slow it down a little, but we can't stop this. You know, when people want something, they're going to get it, and you can't stop it. Just like we're doing this today, you can't stop it. You can't stop me from doing these things. Can't stop you from speaking out. Can't stop you from getting married. Maybe you don't get married here. You go somewhere else. But you can't stop you. Right. Doris, we just lost the other two, so you're you and I are it until they come back. Okay. So what is right now, like what do you have children by the way? No. Okay. So you, neither one of you have children. No, we have a niece that lives with us. She's gonna be twenty one very soon she's in she's a college student she was uh uh raised in venezuela and that's where her family is her mom and dad and uh, one of her brothers and she wanted to go to school here and um so she's living with us but we don't have neither one of us has birthed a baby Mm -hmm. but uh, you take care of them so tell me about your work and how was it um i know that um Susan helped to really um, implant in her in her work some really good um, strides forward. Tell me about what's going on in corporations and things like that as far as, um, you know, partnerships and things like that. Civil well, partnerships. you know, in the last several years, I know that a lot of companies uh, have domestic partner benefits, and that uh, really... Uh, was a breakthrough. Um, So I think that corporate America has gotten on the bandwagon Mm -hmm. and realized that they have to provide, you know, benefits for their uh, gay employees uh, in order to be fair and in order to attract um, folks that are talented and can be assets to their companies. That's the, that's the deal. And that's the deal here too. I mean, if we don't, I mean, can you imagine? I can imagine. I can't imagine how many people won't come here if we don't honor these relationships and the, oh, absolutely. And, and so much creativity comes out of this. Oh yes, absolutely. Right. And, you know, uh, another thing, Marilyn, is when Liz and I went up to Rehoboth in July to get married, uh, let me tell you, I think the um, law passed in June up there, and we got married in July, and let me tell you, we were received with open arms. The hotel we stayed at, 
just welcomed us and congratulated us on our uh, upcoming marriage. They're, they had a gift for us uh, waiting. It was a lovely cheese and fruit uh, tray with a bottle of champagne. They couldn't have been nicer. At the florist shop, they congratulated us. Uh, the bakery for our wedding cake, they were very, very appreciative of our business. And, and the restaurant uh, where we had our little reception, they, uh, they had a round of um, champagne uh, for our toast uh, that they provided at no charge. So, you know, they, they um, I don't know how they felt um, individually, but let me tell you, as a town, as a community, they welcome the gay community because financially it is a, a windfall for them. Sure. Yeah. I've, so I, if, yeah. if nothing else, you know, these states that are not allowing gay marriage and who continue to discriminate against gay folks, they're, they're missing the boat financially. Mm, right. And even if, and I, you know what else I think? Even if somebody pretends to like something for a little while, yeah. they begin to like it. They begin to, you know, things, the, the tide shifts. And I think, you know, I, I, I like people. I think people can, you know, for the most part, more, most people are inherently good. And I think that sometimes, you know, they carry grudges. They carry old yuck from other people from a long time ago. You know, they carry anger from other people that they don't understand and can't explain even when asked. And so the yeah. more you stand out and you do these things, and, I'm, and I honor you. I mean, I've heard several women getting married up in, is it Maine or Vermont? You know, there's like, yes. yeah. Lately, I've heard of several women going up there and getting married. And I say, all the power to you. Let's, you know, let's shine a light on this so other people know yeah. what's possible. But, you know, uh, Marilyn, um, it's just like anything else. Maya Angelou says, when you know better, you do better. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And so what about medical care and um, how does that affect you? Well, I have to say that we have never had an issue here. Um, our doctor, the doctors, thank God that we've chosen when we moved here. Um, I mean, they don't even bat an eye, you know, when we introduce, I'll, I always introduce Elizabeth as my partner, um, the nurses, the doctors, the dentists, the chiropractors, uh, hairdressers, this area seems to be very, very welcoming. Uh-huh. That's cool. That's wonderful. Yes. Yeah. That's wonderful. Now we do have, you know, all the legal stuff in place, uh, power of attorney, um, living wills, and whatever else we have to have. We have that in case it's needed. Mm. So but you, we, we have not never had to use it. Right. So in a case, and I don't want to say this, but in a case that, you, I mean, you, have, you got married. Suppose, for instance, you want a divorce. What do you do? Uh, I, you know what? Marilyn, I don't really know, but I would assume we'd have to go back to the state of Delaware, uh -huh. where it's legal and where we were married to uh, get a divorce. Uh -huh. So there, there would be something in place generally to get a divorce. Um, you know, I don't really know, to tell you the truth. It's not mm -hmm. something that, that we're contemplating right. or think will ever happen right Is but this, i know that yeah. we have to file uh our income tax now our status as married you do yes the federal uh federal, federal government says that we have to file as married uh-huh and not state not of course uh-huh uh -huh. but if you were in delaware you'd probably file for state too yes uh -huh. that's interesting yep. i didn't even know that mm-hmm uh, well, I, are they? Oh, they're coming back. Those two wandering ladies, they're back, uh -oh. aren't they? Yeah. Are you back? Good. Here we are. Okay, good. Well, we'll see you in a minute. Well, Doris and I were just talking about. She, we were talking about. There you uh, are. The fact Did you go that, out for lunch, Kim? Yeah, they let, they went out for a drink. Now they're back. Oh. 
Um, Doris and I were just kind of chatting a little bit about, I was just curious what would happen if she decided to get a divorce, what she would do and what was in place. Kathleen, do you know the answer? No. Well, we're, we're guessing she has to go back to Delaware. Um, yeah, you would have to go back to that state. Well, um, I think you can just go to a state that, um, you have to move there and become a resident of a state that recognizes the marriage in the first place. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Sure. But first, get all the login and passwords. <laughs> yeah, right. Take all the bank accounts with you. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> Susan, I want you to talk about what you what you were able to accomplish at your company. Ah. That's very interesting, and I think we should go there. It, it was interesting because, um, you know, sometimes things happen by happenstance and good fortune. But um, I um, was being rather uh, heavily pursued by another company. And I, um, I really do adore the company that I work for. Um, so I really wasn't looking to leave at all. And finally, I gave in after about 11 months of them knocking on my door and said, OK, I'll talk to you. And as we began to talk, I said, listen, I, I really, really love my company. They're wonderful to me. I said, the only thing that would change my mind and, and entertain the thought of my leaving would be if you offer domestic partnership benefits because my company does not. And they came back to me and they said, well, we do offer them. And then I went, darn, because that's great, but I really don't want to leave my company. But I have to really seriously consider this because, you know, it affects a lot of things, including my pension. So I, um, the subject kind of came up uh, with my direct manager, my district manager. And he said, sit down right there in his office. He said, I'm not losing you. And he picked up the phone and he made a call to our home office. And um, he said, bear with us. We're going to work on this. You're too valuable and we don't want to lose you. And within 24 hours, my regional manager had been on the phone with the um, CEO of the company. And they said by 2014, we would have domestic partnership benefits in place that we, they couldn't be losing good people for this particular issue. And how old is your company? Pardon me? How old is your company? 130 years. There's something to say about that. Well, there really is. That's very, very true. Um, you know, my regional director said something very touching to me. You know, he said, I'm a very conservative guy. And he said, over the past year and a half, I've gotten to know you and Lori very well. And you've changed my mind about this whole topic and he said you deserve to have everything that my wife and I have and we you should be ashamed that we don't offer this and we're going to fix this that's and just, I, I I thought that was phenomenal it's I mean, phenomenal it, it really truly it truly was and uh, and you know I have to say if you know a company thinks this way and their philosophy is this way that's the kind of company I don't care who you are that's the kind of company you want to do business with because you know that they're going to be as on the up and up as up and up can be. Right. Right. I mean, and that's huge because I don't know. There's a lot of people, you know, that don't are not on the up and up, you know, are not there in everybody's best interest. But, you know, if somebody's going to care enough about somebody like this, that you know how big you can take it. I, I completely agree with you. And I, you know, I said to him, you're stuck with me now. <laughs> Well, but, yeah, uh, you know, I was able to very graciously decline the other company and say, you know what, I'm sticking with them because they're sticking with me and they recognize that I have I'm entitled to every right that everybody else there has that's heterosexual. Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't yeah. have anything to do with who you're with. Right. I mean, right. I mean, you don't work any differently. Ideally. No. You, you know, what what'd you say? Ideally. Ideally. Yeah. But I mean, it's like it, it's it's almost like. It's a, like, how could you even think anything different? Right. Based on what? So that's wonderful, Susan. And, and, and uh, Kathleen, what is your experience? Uh, in the work environment? Yeah. Well, I work at a marketing communications agency, and um, I actually used to be a client of theirs like 14 years ago. And um, I got to know them, um, you know, on more of a personal level. So they were very familiar with, um, you know, the fact that I had a female partner and, um, 
that would then, you know, never phase them because, of course, it's New York. The, you know, the environment's a little more liberal. Uh, and so I actually, my, my boss, my current boss now, um, he's a good friend of mine, and he's, um, he's very family-oriented. And so uh, when I had my, my first son, um, you know, at the time, the company I was working for, they, you know, ironically, they... They were also familiar with the fact that, that I was gay and, um, you know, again, didn't have a problem with it. Um, the only problem I had was when I announced that I was pregnant, the human resources director congratulated me in a very icy manner. She was very cold about it. She just said, well, that's good news, I suppose. <laughs> and and I, I said to her um, to return the favor and be, you know, sarcastic myself. I said, well, it was unplanned. I was going to say that. <laughs> I was going to say it's an accident. (laughs) Yeah. So she, she told me that she doubted that and then she turned on her heel and marched off and that was her two cents worth. But soon after that company was actually uh, sold to a different larger company. And so I went to uh, my current boss as, as a, you know, someone I knew and said, you know, I'm I'm leaving this other company and I'd I'd like to come work for you because you need a a solid marketing person. And we've worked together many years and and we work well together. And he really didn't think about it long at all. And he said, "I, I think that would work out well. And that began our relationship together. And I've worked with these people for um, about 14 years now. Wow. And, um, and they're the same people and, uh, and, you know, I know all their wives and, and, you know, husbands and, you know, we get along great and no issue at all with any of it. Wow. Loyalty. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, loyalty. And it's all about I'm, relationships, you know? Yeah. I mean that, and that's, but that's the meaning of relationships. You know, all the, all the, all the other dynamics doesn't matter. It's the connection in a relationship that matters. And it doesn't matter, like, how it looks or how it's built, you know, right. just the connection, mm. you know, the heart and soul of it right, is what matters, right. to look past all the other stuff, any kind of discrimination, to look past that. Yep. And, and I just want to say, you know, I haven't said this in a long time, I should have, but I've been so engrossed in talking to these ladies that if anybody, again, wants to call in, if you have a personal experience you'd like to share, a question you'd like to ask. If you want some support, this is the time and the place to do it. You're going to get great information. So call us at 919-518-9773, or please feel free to connect with us on computers, that's plural, 2K Voice if you want to come in on Skype. Uh, Doris, what about your experience working? Um, uh, well... I really wasn't out of the closet when when I was working, um, but I have to tell you that um, because Liz and I both worked for the same company, we had to be very careful. She was in HR, and I was in sale uh, on the sales side of the house, so so we had to be uh, very discreet. But yeah. since we moved down here. Uh, It'll be 10 years in April, uh, 10 years ago. Since we moved down here, um, we've been very open uh, about our relationship. And um, I have to say that we haven't been discriminated against at all. As a matter of fact, um, both of Liz's uh, previous bosses I mean, we've had them to our home. They take us out for dinner. Um, when I'm sick, they send me flowers. Um, you know, they've been very, very open um, and accepting. And Wonderful. Liz has not, to my knowledge, experienced any uh, discrimination at all. But again, I, I, it's because people get to know us. They get to know Liz, and they love her. She does a great job, uh, and she does it with a lot of compassion. But she's um, um, she does her job. Well, I want to ask you something, because you said something, Doris, and it's something I, I really want to ask. And I'm, How do you help somebody come out of the closet? What would you say to a woman or to a man 
you know, who is exper- young, a young girl, what would you say to them about coming out of the closet? Um, it, it would depend really on their circumstance. If they were troubled, if they were um, fearful, uh, for instance, if they felt that their parents, if it's a young person, if their parents wouldn't be accepting um you know, all you can do is talk with them and encourage them to to seek, prof- I would encourage them to seek professional help to do it the right way and maybe even have uh, the parents um, get help with it. But, you know, it depends on the individual and the individual circumstances. But I'll, I will tell you that here in Raleigh, we are very, very... Uh, lucky to have an LGBT center that is very, very strong in the community. They have um, uh, programs that help every aspect of the gay community. They have programs for transgendered, for young teens, um, on and on. For on us and gray-haired on. ones. Right. On and on. Uh, yeah. So um, I, I would um, direct them to the LGBT Center in Raleigh, too. And, and Kathleen, do you have anything to add to that? Words, um, words well, of wisdom? Think, words of well, wisdom. Well, I think what I would say, um, I agree with Doris, and I would say that I think that any person who's who's thinking that they might want to um, acknowledge and come out to loved ones about um, being gay, I, I would... I would ask that person if they've got any kind of support network, whether it's friends or extended family, um, you know, a counselor or folks at school or wherever. Um, Because I think that's really important to have that in place. Um, Because I think for a lot of people initially, there can be um, not only a fear of rejection, but a reality of rejection um, from some people who love you. And now they think that their experience with you and their relationship is going to change. But the truth of the matter is, nothing really changes except for the fact that they become aware that now this person's gay. And I think that's what a lot of people, I mean, it's almost like, it's like, you know, if you're an African American or you're black, people think, oh, it's going to come off on them. They don't want to, you know, it's that kind of thing. If if you're around somebody who's gay, I'm going to become gay. I don't know what people are so scared of. You know, maybe it pushes a button where they're not sure. In some cases. Oh, we're going to turn their children gay. Yeah, you're going to turn the children gay. And I mean, that's, you know. But, again, going back to some of the things that you've said, Doris and and, uh, Kathleen and Susan, about getting to know you. I mean, I feel like I want to sing the song, you know. (laughs) Seriously, getting to know somebody, getting to know what it's like and, you know, and hearing. What about you, Susan? What would you say to somebody? Or what would you share? You know, I've never had anybody ask me about or ask me for help for coming out. Um, I can tell you that. The only experience I've had with it was actually persuading my partner, Lori, to come out with me. Um, that, was, uh, that was a two-month decision for her to, to actually come right out of the closet, and, and we did it together, and it was nice to have the support. So to piggyback on what Doris and Cal have said, is, is it's the support that's key. That's, that's, what, that's what anybody needs, and whether it's coming out of the closet whether it's overcoming any other fear, right? You could apply that to any life situation. Just you just need the support to do that, and it was kind of nice that we did it together. To tell sure. you the truth, Lori and I, and um, it helped us deal with our families, and and uh, a lot of it was easy. It was harder for us to actually say it than for other folks. They already knew it, actually. To tell you the truth, a lot of our family and friends already knew. They were just waiting on us, but. Anybody who's thinking about it, they just need the support. Yeah, and, and I love I like what you what you've all said, and Susan, what you said. I think it, it it's true. The anticipation of something is far more fearful is is far worse than the actual doing of it. Once you Absolutely. do it, the release is so beautiful, you know, so much more comfortable. Just like you know, it, it, just like anything. So you know, we're we're going to be winding down in the next few minutes, and I. I'm sure that there's plenty of things we haven't touched upon. So I'd like to go to each of you and ask you to share something that you would like to leave our audience with, you know, in going forward. So let's start with you, Kathleen. What would you say? 
Um, I think I would just say that, um, you know, that if there are folks out there who are listening or watching or whatever, and, and you, you feel as if you're intimidated by someone who's different than you, that I think all it takes is a candid conversation for you to realize that there's a lot more in common than you know. And, um, you know, I think most biases, most prejudices are built around the fact that there's ignorance. So I think once you overcome that, um, I, th I think the relationship, there can really be a bridge um, there instead of a wall. Perfect. Uh, For ignorance, that's a big word. So that's a huge, you know, coming to Jesus word right there, ignorance. Mm -hmm. Susan? Um, you know, Cal said it actually quite well, but you also said earlier the relationship, you know, if, if you do have an open door with a conversation, you get to know somebody that, that is, uh, and there isn't a person in this world who doesn't know somebody or have somebody in their family who is gay. I, I've not stumbled across one relationship, one person that I've met that they don't say, oh yes, my sister is gay, or, you know, oh, I have a cousin who's gay, or something like that. We all know somebody who's gay. We all know somebody who's straight. Yep. But the point is, is we all know somebody. I keep trying to drill it down to it's, it's a human issue. And just be open and accepting. Mm -hmm. And don't be so quick to judge. Um, yeah. You might find that you actually are not as resistant to this lifestyle as you think. We're, we're all quite the same. Right. Thank you for... Thank you again. Thank you for putting it that way because, I mean, that's another reason why we do this show is if we can, you know, change just a little bit or a lot. I'll take anything we can do, but anything, you know, is, is worth it. Uh, Doris, what about you? What would you leave with us? Um, I would say is with any bias or discrimination or bigotry, it cannot be legislated away. <laughs> um, I mean, look at the black issue in this country. You know, in '64, you know, LBJ signed the um, uh, Human Rights Act into law, and you know, it it comes boils right down to we have more in common, really, than we have differences. And the only way you find that out is to have a relationship with. Uh, folks and let them get to know you. Yes, and, and that's brilliantly put too because you're right. It cannot be legislated. I mean, it can't be done that way. It can't be voted away. It can't be voted here. I mean, it won't matter. It, what, it, what, what makes a difference in one state to another is a person, is a person who stands up or a group of people stand up who say, no, we don't want to do it this way. We want to do it this way. And so it doesn't matter. And we will, people will infiltrate and get our way across. It might take a while, but, I mean, who cares as long as it's done? And so I want to commend the three of you very much for coming here and thanking you very, very much for sharing with us. And, and Amnon's got something to say. He's given me a I, thing. I, I just want a quick comment, and I'm sure you talked about Modern Family. Tell the me show? about it. Oh, yeah. the show. What do you think? Oh, love it. Terrific show. Yeah. Very funny. Yeah. And it's one perfect, of my isn't it? Yeah, one because it, it it does send a, a message, but it does it in a way. Ellen. I mean, look at all that's gone on with sure. Ellen, right? So yeah, that's a good point. So I want to thank you very, very much for being here today. You you're both all well, both. All three of you have been marvelous. And I thank you for you know sharing your time and I know that's um, a lot. So thank you. And I want to thank everybody out there for being with us for this hour. Um, I know you all have a lot of things to do, so when you come here, I know it's a commitment, and we're going to give you the very best of everything that we can. If I can be of any service to you at all, uh, coaching, life, business, anything, please let me know. You can click above my head. Like Marilyn Shannon on Facebook. Like The Breaking Free Show on Facebook. Uh, reach out to me on Google+. Plus. Love to hear from you in any way, shape, or form. If you have an idea for a show, if you want to share something with us, that's great. There's nothing small. Every idea that comes our way is something that somebody else would like to know about. So if you have an idea, a tool, a strategy, a tactic, you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody about something, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. 
And with that, I'm going to say goodbye to all of you. Have a wonderful holiday. And to the three of you, I would love to have lunch or dinner. And, Let and, us do and it. I would yeah. love to. And I would love to meet your partners. And I know my husband would be loving it, too. So, <laughs> Susan, you, you did so good at doing this. Could you make a dinner date? <laughs> yes. Okay? Yes. Perfect. I'll see you all very soon, and thank you all for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Bye, Marilyn. Bye. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Amnon Nissan, Sundays, 9 a.m. till noon. Health In with Debbie Brook, Mondays, 11 a.m. till noon. Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Mondays, 1 till 2 p.m. Lessons of Vietnam with NCBVI members, the second and fourth Wednesday of each month from 7.30 till 8.30 p.m. Reawaken Your Brilliance with Julie Seibert, Wednesdays, 9 till 10 p.m. And if you tune in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com Sponsored by thatvidblasterguy.com carolinaapparel.com and deltaforce.net